going to be a big one, Hilda. I can feel it. So you guys are doing OK tonight? Lovely. I got one thing and one thing only to say to you guys. Tonight, everybody is going to eat their vegetables. But I thought we'd kick it up a few notches. Maybe a little fresh crab and horseradish salad with Yukon gold potatoes. Ah, throw in a few baby beets, too. Why not, you know? Maybe a turnip soup. And then that pork fat thing stops. And then we're going to end it. I'm going to show you an incredible dessert with parsnips. Unbelievable. With a cinnamon and walnut icing. To die for. <laughs> to die for. Unbelievable. Get ready. It's all happening right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> How you doing, Jim? Got Jeff back in the house. Speaking about who's in the house, give it up for Doc Gibson, Cliff. How you guys doing? Terrific. You know, there's just some wonderful things about uh, vegetables. Before we even go there, I've got to say, we have just been tremendously excited about how many pieces of mail and how many hits on the internet, that www.foodtv.com thing, because I would still use the mail. But <laughs> everybody's been writing lately about vegetables and vegetarian. And can you do more vegetables? Well, this one's for you out there, because we're going to kick it up a few notches tonight. We went to the uh, grocery this morning, and the unbelievable team here at the Food Network, this is what we came up with. Pearl onions right now are out, both in white and red pearl onions. Love them. Little assortment of potatoes, but uh, one of my favorites being these little fingerling potatoes. And of course, Yukon gold potatoes. They've got a little different starch. Are you from Yukon, are you? Hey. <laughs> and uh, beets, which uh, rule both large, very large and small. One of my favorite things in the whole wide world. <laughs> it's horseradish. <laughs> It's horseradish. And uh, celery root, fennel, or finocchio, turnips, all kinds of different little root vegetables. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to have fun, fun, fun with vegetables and have a great time. All right. One thing that I got to tell you. This salad that we're getting ready to do, I'm going to uh, gather a few little ingredients, some horseradish, some Yukon gold potatoes, and then we're going to make this incredible crab salad with all those. Don't even think about touching that dial. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs, everybody. <laughs> because we're having fun. You know why? We're live in New York City. So every now and then, every now and then we uh, have to go check out the e-board over here because uh, as I was telling you earlier, it's just amazing all over around the world, this mail that we're getting. And I thank you all for that and also getting on the internet. And uh, this is a question that's coming from uh, California about um, her love for horseradish, but when she goes to the supermarket, uh, she can't really find it. And what else can she make? Well, I can tell you, uh, horseradish, beside uh, pickling it and brining it like that for Bloody Marys, um, 
There's a lot of things. I have a signature dish that I do with a horseradish crust on fish, which is wonderful. And you just freshly grate it after you peel it. Uh, you can keep it. Uh, you can find it in most supermarkets today because it is cultivated and, and, uh, and grown here in America. So thanks for writing in. We appreciate that. All right. Now we're going to get serious. Now, first thing that I want to start to do is I've got to start getting a little bit of my act together, as they say. So uh, I got to start working on a little bit of uh, components. There's two types of fennel. This is the more common one, also called fenocchi, uh, or finocchio. That's right, right? Where are you guys from? Little Italy, okay. And, um, and then another one is uh, more brown and used for the seeds. But basically, when you buy in fennel, uh, also there's a lot of confusion that it's, uh, it's called and sold as sweet anise, and basically it's fennel, fennel's fennel. But you want to look for not too brown on the seed like that. You always want to look at the stem like that and make sure, just like celery, if you will, and that the uh, stems are firm. And what we're going to do is I'm going to prep. I don't get rid of any of this stuff. Most people throw this stuff out. I don't. There's wonderful flavor in there, so you can infuse oil with it. Uh, you can use it for a soup. You can use this beautiful for a garnish. There's a lot of things that you can do. Sometimes I peel this back and I chop it up and I use it just like dill uh, in, in various things. But what I'm interested in is the bulb of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to prep this a little bit and uh, we're going to do what I call julienne. Now you don't have to be fancy about this. You can see the heart of the, uh, just like celery, it has a little heart like that. But what we're going to do is we're going to julienne this and we're going to roast this. The amazing thing, just like onions and garlic, is that fennel gets very, very, very sweet and the licorice flavor comes out when you, when you roast it. And uh, that's going to be one of the components that we're going to use for this great crab dish that we're going to do. So we're going to julienne that. You can see we really cook here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, this is the real deal, you know? And uh, so th that's uh, really a sort of a large julienne cut of the fennel that, we, that we've got right there. And um, th that's how simple it is. So we have one bulb of fennel. And uh, what I like to then do is sort of put this in a bowl and uh, from that point I like to toss a little bit of olive oil, a little fresh ground pepper so that it has some flavor, a little salt, and as I said, olive oil. And you don't want to soak it, you just want to have enough to toss it so it's lightly oiled like this. And then what we're going to do now, very simply, is we're just going to use a baking pan or you could use a sheet pan or whatever that you have. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in the oven and we're going to roast this. About 350 degrees works just terrific. And um, you can see I did some earlier and you can not only smell this but look at the color. This has been roasting slowly for about an hour and a half like that and it gets so sweet. Here I'll let you have a taste of that. It's, yeah. it's warm now because we're really cooking on this show. <laughs> Okay, so we have our fennel and we got it roasted. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get some beets. And uh, the thing about these beets, people are afraid of beets because particularly the large ones, what they have to do is they've got to peel them or they wash them and then your hands are like red for like three days, you know. It looks like you murdered like a neighborhood or something, you know. <laughs> Basically, what, what I can recommend to you is that you can boil them until they're fork tender and then use a clean towel and that will take the skin right away from them, particularly when they're young like this, when they're very small. Now, the other thing is the tops of these beet greens, I don't throw these things away either because uh, I'm going to leave a, a few of the tops on. I've got some water here, real simple, that I'm going to just lightly salt. But I don't throw the, green, uh, the tops of these away either because I do a lot of uh, mustard greens, a lot of uh, kind of southern cooked greens like that, and a little bit of those inside of collard and other greens make, uh, make it wonderful. You can see that some of them are golden, some of them are red, and um, we're just cutting the tops off like this and then we're going to just cook them until they're fork tender as another component for our salad. So we've got our fennel, we've got our beets. Now I'm going to show you a neat little gadget for this potato. When I was thinking about this dish with the crab meat, with the horseradish, I wanted to sort of have a bed, but I really didn't want to have necessarily just a whole bunch of greens again. 
So one of the great things that we just only think about potatoes as either mashed or baked is, um, is doing some creative things, particularly with salads. So I'm going to show you. This is an inexpensive mandolin. Not the kind that Doc would play, but <laughs> the kind that you could work at. Now, they, got, they come as expensive in all aluminum and kicked up and stuff, and as inexpensive as just a little box, little plastic box thing. And then this is sort of in the middle. I take one of those Yukon Gold potatoes, and what I'm going to do is I have the blade set. This is not something that you want young kids to be doing, okay? I mean, this is a sharp blade here, just like a knife. And what you want to do is we're just going to use this, and I'm got it set down. And what happens by doing this, when you come down to this part of the end, you want to be careful. You can see I have a uniform cut. See that? A uniform slice like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak them in water. You always want to do that while you're prepping the potatoes because I just got an email last night actually about somebody making one of the potato dishes and we're doing some other things. I mean, talking to the neighbor or whatever. And all of a sudden, she, she and uh, he came back and the potatoes were like that disgusting color. Well, that's going to happen if you don't soak them because it's air. The air exposes them. It oxidizes, so it's going to discolor them. Keep them in water like that. When you're ready, you just take them out, as I have right here, salt a little bit of water, and then what I'm going to do is you always, people have the mistake of just doing this with potato, and then they never separate. Some of the potatoes cook, some of it's not cooked, so you want to be sure to always kind of separate them when you're going to start, or at least turn them like that. And now, we're going to cook these into the fork tender. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this incredible crab and horseradish salad. Don't touch the dial. We'll be right back. Uh, for some miracle, you just were like channel surfing and you just landed on the Food Network. I'm Emeril Lagasse. And, uh, and the first dish that we're doing tonight with multiple components, but we're having some fun, is a crab and horseradish salad with Yukon gold potatoes, some roasted fennel, and beets. We have added the beets in there. What we're going to do, folks, just simply with a fork, you can see if they're fork tender. And this is a little hard right here, so I'm going to let these go a little bit more. Same thing I want to do with the potatoes. We're going to check. I mean, I don't know where you're getting your potatoes these days, but these don't come in with those, like, built-in thermometers, like they pop open and say, oh, my potato's done, Luis. <laughs> so what I tell people is that it's very simple. It's like let it cool down and then see if it's the texture that you want. You don't want them to be mush. They're perfect. <laughs> so, when they are, yeah, get your own show, will ya? When they're done, what you wanna do is you wanna cool these down pretty quick. Okay, with a lot of vegetables when you're doing this sort of stuff. So I have a little ice bath over here, which is just ice and a little water and uh, in a bowl. Just submerge them like that, and it's going to stop them cooking instantly. A lot of green vegetables, let's just say green beans as an example. The same thing, when you put them in that ice bath, it just stops them, and it keeps that wonderful green, that green color in them as well. Same thing with broccoli. So we're going to cool those down a little bit. All right, now what we're going to do... Okay, they're all out. Fish and potatoes. Taters! <laughs> all right. Here's now what we're going to do. We've got an eye on our beets. I've got some uh, mayonnaise here, or as we say in New Orleans, mayonnaise. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of chervil. That's uh, an herb like looks like parsley, 
a little parsley in there, garlic. I love these recipes. A lot of chopped red onion like this, really fine, is wonderful. If you don't have red onion, that's okay. We won't call the police on you. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of mustard. I'm actually using a Dijon mustard, okay? Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna mix those ingredients in there. So I've got this like tasty mayonnaise right now, almost like a Louis dressing. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kick it up a few notches. Yeah. This, this horseradish root that I have right here that you can see when you, when you find it like this, okay? This is how you want to work with it. First of all, it comes from the ground, so it's like, you know, my hands are dirty now. So, I mean, keep that in mind. And if you're not going to use the whole thing, you don't really want to wash it because it'll deteriorate fast. So what I do is I sort of like just give it a little towel wash like this, you see? Just like I would do a truffle. All right, so now we've done that. Wipe up the board a little bit. All right. Then, I'm not going to use it all right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to take a little piece. I'm going to cut the end off. I'm going to say maybe I'm going to use this much for this. Just put a little wrap on that. You know, you could use a peeler like such, but it's very hard, as you can see, because it's a root vegetable. So we're going to take that just like that and peel it. Then what we're going to do, now that we get it peeled, is just with a regular box grater, I'll tell you, you grate some of this and put these in your mashed potatoes. Boy, you want to talk about taking out the neighborhood. <laughs> Woo! Man. All right, now we got all that work done, and here we go. Look, box grater like this, the big grate. You just take it like this and you grate it. That's how simple it is with a horseradish, okay? We're going to take some of that. You smell that? Here, let me put some on your plate. Okay. And then what you could do is, I already have some grated. You can pass that around a little bit and mm. turn on your friends to that. Isn't that a wonderful <laughs> smell? Let me tell you, you do this in quantity. I have some grated. I'm going to put some grated in here, horseradish. Now I'm going to finish this salad. Watch this. I need some lemon juice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this lemon around, and then I'm just going to fork the lemon. See, no seeds. Because I may not use all this. I may not need the whole juice of a lemon like this. I just need a little acidity. You could use vinegar, too. Okay, so now that's done. We're going to season it up with a little bit of fresh ground pepper and a little bit of salt. Okay? Perfect. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this crab meat, put that right inside there just like that. I know, I hate when that happens too. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just toss that dressing with that crab meat. But I don't want to get it all soggy. I want to see some of the crab like this, you see? And then you just keep that in the ice box until you're ready. Now, let's check our beets. Almost done. They're almost done, and we're going to shock them as well. When these things are done, we're going to shock them as well. Now, one more thing. We've got our fennel. This is celery root. This is another, or celerac is another name for it, that you can buy it. Strong celery flavor. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that mandolin, and I'm going to just make a few slices with that. And then what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take these slices, and I'm going to fry them. So we have chips, like celery root chips. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to put this whole thing together, and then we're going to kick it up another notch. Stick around. We'll be right back.
right, now we're ready. Check it out. First thing is this. Those potatoes that we just sort of had lightly blanched. If you just joined us, forget about it. You're a mess. You see those celery roots? See how crispy they fry up like that? They're like chips. They taste terrific. Wait till you see what tastes is terrific. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to start with a little base like this of these potatoes. And, um, I mean, they don't have to be uh, fancy schmancy. We're just going to kind of do a little base like this, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. If they break like that, hey, give it to the dog. <laughs> yeah, he's got to eat. See that? Cover it right up. It's right like glue. All right, now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to season this so that it tastes really, really good with some salt and with some pepper. And then I'm going to just drizzle a tiny, tiny little bit of olive oil on the potato like this. Okay? There's that. Next. I thought what we'd do, I want to show you these beets. When we took the beets out and they come out like this, okay? You want to clean them. If you want to clean them. I mean, they're cooked. How clean can they be? They've been like boiling at 212 degrees. For me, I eat the skin. It doesn't matter. If it bothers you, look. Here's a little tip. You can just rub it like this. You see that? And the skin comes right out. Okay? For me, it doesn't bug me. All right. So now you know how to peel them. Watch this. I thought what we would do is put a few of these... Just kind of like this. Now, the crab salad. You can just use your hands. You can do whatever you want. You want to be elegant. Look, take a coffee cup. I mean, you only use them once a day. Might as well get your money's worth. Take the crab salad like this. Then what I do is I put it right in the center. Okay? Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm just getting warmed up, baby. You take the beets like this. Take the beets, little olive oil. Just a tiny bit. Little salt. They're happy now. Can't see them smiling, but they are. Just toss them real lightly like this. Then we're going to just put a few of these like this. Look, put a few there. Couple over here like this. I can hear Doc growling over there. <laughs> Looks good, huh, Doc? Looks excellent. Then I take the beautiful caramelized fennel and I just add a little bit of like this, a little bit of that fennel. Just like that. And you got the sweetness of that. And then some chips of celery. Put a few more chips like that. And if you want to serve a couple of them on the side, that's okay. Try one of those. Try one of those. I'm coming back to you in a second, I mm -hmm. promise you. Mm -hmm. Hey, look, that's how beautiful, simple, elegant crab and horseradish salad with potatoes and beets are, okay, guys? There's so much love in that dish. Can you feel it? All right. I'm coming back to you. Now, it's a clean hand thing, sorry. I got a little butter in here. And um, I'm using butter right now because I'm making a turnip soup. Most people, you know, turnip soup. Hey, delicious. You don't like turnips, you could use carrots, you could use parsnips. You could use any root vegetable, really, that you want. Here's the basic principles. Butter because of the delicate flavor. Starting to get hot. What I'm going to do now, I got about four of those nice onions, thinly sliced. I'm going to start cooking those onions like that. This is a prime example of how universal can, you can do and be, not only with vegetables, but if you want to kick it up, great. You want to keep it vegetarian? That's great, too. And, and speaking about vegetarian, 
we got to have a stock or some liquid in here for the soup. So if you're not a vegetarian, you're not worried about that, then you can go ahead and use whatever stock that you want, chicken stock, whatever kind of stock that you want. Vegetarians, a little tip for you. The most perfect stock, like I have right here, is taking vegetables, covering them with water, simmering it for 45 minutes, just like you do, particularly carrots and celery, celery root, wonderful vegetable flavor. Let it cool, you can keep it in the ice box, not gonna go bad. You wanna make this, you got an easy vegetable stock. Okay, once the onions cook for about eight minutes with a little bit of salt and a little pepper. All right, a lot of pepper. <laughs> then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add, unbelievable, you're in heaven? <laughs> See, tell the folks at home right there, just look right there. Tell them that we're really cooking on this show, will you? All right, thank you. <laughs> like those other late night shows I mean how many prisoners and how many movies can you talk about you know what I mean all right now celery in there eight minutes the onions about four minutes with the celery we cook that in this is when you ask yourself self how many cloves of garlic do you really want in here for me it's all of it that's like that All right, so these turnips, these are kind of small turnips. You can quarter them, you can cook them like that, you can butter them, you can mash them, you can do all kinds of things. But what you gotta do, not necessarily though, is you gotta peel them. Here's a simple way that I peel them. You can use a peeler. I just like peel them like I'm using an apple. That very, very thin outside skin, I just kind of do this. And I peel them like that, very simple. I don't go too deep, I just take the skin off. And then, for this particular soup, I want, to, I want this to cook. Another little key here, I want this to cook in a reasonable amount of time. You wanna cook it longer, you leave them whole. You wanna speed up the process, you gotta dice them, or quarter them, or whatever you want. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's exactly, like this doesn't have to cook forever. So that's what I'm just doing here, I'm just taking this, in little dices. After the celery, add the turnips. Then, something that really goes well with this soup, and a lot of root vegetable soups, is laurel. But you don't really know it a lot of times as laurel. You know it as bay leaf. And that's what this is here. And they come from the laurel tree, and all the little bay leaves like that. They're very strong, because these are uh, pretty fresh, and they more and more of them now. I'm gonna use like one or two. At the end of the cooking bit, you want to take this out of there. These aren't the easiest thing to digest, believe me. Couple of bay leaves. Woo, man. Then we're going to take our vegetable stock. Cover it. Ah, we'll get another stove later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Bring this up to a boil. You want to cook this and simmer this for like an hour if you got the time. 45 minutes at least, you get all this wonderful flavor. That's what I have here right now. When we come back, I'm gonna show you how to take the bay leaf out, how we're gonna kick this up a notch, and then it's pasta cake. Stick around, we'll be right back. We're finishing this wonderful turnip soup. We brought the boat blender out, better known as the boat motor. So this is completely vegetarian. We took the bay leaf out and we're just pureeing it now. See how delicious that looks? You should see how it tastes. This is when you can ask yourself if you want to add a little richness to this. 
which a lot of vegetable soups do have, particularly uh, pureed ones. You can add a little bit of milk or you can add a little bit of cream. Get a little higher fat in there and, um, and a little bit more texture, just a tiny bit. Now, this is where it comes, this is where the tough pot comes now, okay? We're gonna serve this, we're gonna serve this in a little bowl like this. Now, before you go ahead and do this with your guests, always you wanna be sure to taste it, particularly after you pu puree it, to see how the seasoning is. More salt, more pepper, you wanna kick it up a notch. Oh my goodness. This is how I would serve this. I would serve this just like this. Or maybe you'd like to do some parsnip chips, like we did the celery. Maybe you want to do some celery on that. Really, really simple, served like this. Now, no offense. This is now like sometimes, you know that guy that's on, t sometimes I feel like I got like two devils over here. I got one devil over here going, add some pork fat to it. Yeah. Then I got this guy over here, no, keep it vegetarian. <laughs> no, add some pork fat to it. Yeah. No, keep it vegetarian. So, if you want to kick it up a notch, I had some country ham laying around. Yeah. Sorry, Doc. It's okay. I got yours vegetarian, though, baby. You can garnish it with a little bit of country ham like that. But I actually ended up having a couple of old corn muffins around, too. So I diced those up with a little olive oil like that. Great garnish for soups and things. And then what you can do is with that country ham, you can garnish it with some cornbread croutons as well, okay? All right. This next thing, you're not even gonna believe. It's like so off the page. There's like not even a page there yet. These guys right here. This is a parsnip. And it's like a carrot. They're really sweet. They're high in vitamins. So I said, self, why not do a parsnip cake? Of course, I got a few looks. But basically what you can do is with a peeler, which they stole, what you can do is you peel these. See, and they're really super white underneath that. You see that? So you peel them just like with a like a vegetable peeler, like you do a carrot. And then what you do is you grate it, just like you would a carrot, okay? So, this is the grated parsnip. Sweet. Check this out. In here, I got a little butter. So we're gonna make a cake, and we're gonna start using this term, it's called cream, big fancy cooking term. Cream the butter. Now the butter is soft, and I'm using a paddle. Once you get that smell of butter, it starts changing color. Now where it really comes in is it, the expression cream is because you're gonna add the sugar to that, and together, it's gonna be creamed. I'm using brown sugar, regular sugar, but I'm not only using just butter. Unlike a lot of recipes that have butter, particularly with cakes. Hey, butter is a beautiful thing. But if you use all butter in some recipes or formulas, sometimes it can get a little dry. Whereas if you used, you gotta have a fat in there. So if you use all vegetable oil, as an example, sometimes it gets a little bit too moist. So with this, I want an in-between. So I'm using some butter and I'm using some vegetable oil, the liquid kind. Now I'm gonna cream this together. And I've got the uh, mixer on, you can do it with a handheld too, really slow. And you're gonna see what's gonna happen. While that's like creaming, can you see that? Beautiful. While that's doing its thing, let me show you. 
I'm gonna take some flour and sift that with some baking powder, baking soda, a little salt, and some cinnamon in them. Okay, we got that. Got that in a bowl. Once this gets creamed, Okay, once that gets creamed, what we're going to do is now we're going to add the flour and the dry ingredients in this thing. And I like to turn the machine off. So I'll be hitting my friend over here, clouded with cinnamon and flour. Okay, so now I've got that going on. When that starts getting incorporated, I take some eggs. I add a little egg, one at a time. I'm making a cake batter. Very simple. You're supposed to, like, count to ten or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what makes these crazy rules. Count to ten. You count to ten. I'm adding the egg. All right. Once that goes, like it is right now, and we got this wonderful cake, and I got these low cake pans like this, and you want to butter them, or you can oil them on the sides and on the bottom so they don't stick. Okay? Now watch. Okay, so now we got this cake batter. Now what we're going to do is this. See, the brown sugar and the cinnamon in them makes it really good. I've got about, I don't know, four cups or whatever, if you're counting, of grated parsnips instead of carrot. Mm -hmm. Then I got some walnuts. Because I'm nuts about walnuts. I know that. So we'll add those. Then, we'll take one of these fancy spatulas. We'll just sort of fold these ingredients in there, in our cake batter. And then what we'll do is then we'll stop putting the cake batter in our pans, set our oven on 350 degrees, you always got to be sure to get the bottom. There's always a little cluster in there hiding out. Doesn't that look good? No, it does. Uh, where do you taste it? Huh. <laughs> it's to die for. <laughs> so we're going to add that in there. And we're going to bake it. About 20, 25 minutes, 350 degrees. Okay. Now, you can't stop there. I've got butter that I'm going to cream, walnuts, and sugar. I'm going to make this walnut icing. Little vanilla, little cinnamon in them. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish it and kick it up another notch. Stay with us. So we're back, and when all of that sugar with the butter, a little cinnamon, vanilla, gets nice and smooth like it is right now for our icing, then you add the chopped walnuts in there. If you don't like walnuts, you can use pecans. They're pecans, not pecans. <laughs> Peanuts, whatever you like. All right, now, after the cake cools, what you do is you take a serrated knife like I have right here. That's why they have them. And you start. And you want to be careful. You go in the middle. Don't try to slice it all in one shot. Spin it around like a circle. You see? Like I'm doing here. Then, what you do is you want to start building it. As you can see what I did right here. I'm going to take this layer it's really fragile because it's really fresh. I'm going to add that. Moisten it with a little simple syrup, which is basically sugar and water, brought to a boil. I'll use some booze if you want. Yeah! Add that icing like that. Hey, hey, hey. See, it's sad it's over. Now, you build that up. That's what I have right here. If I'm going to serve this for you right now, you keep it in the icebox, take it out, this is what I would do. 
I'd get a little wedge like this. Of our parsnip cake. Look at that. Okay? Then to kick it up a couple of notches, what I would do is add a little bit of this and them fried parsnips that I told you. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.